So along the lines of continuing education, there are certain things that we have to cover because of that. And so one of those things that we have to cover is what does this course cover? Well, this course covers preparing an eQuest model for LEAD EA Credit 1, EA Prerequisite 2, and we're focused on what's most common is uh, LEAD for new construction. But really, for any of the energy models, the process is either identical or very, very similar. So our primary focus is creating the baseline building for LEAD, since that's the blunt of the difficulty for most people. So we'll also focus on troubleshooting, and we'll get to more on that. Um, we'll focus on what to submit to LEAD. And then at the end of the day, so be patient, we'll focus on the logistical implications such as time estimation, cost estimation of the models, and the total LEAD points estimation is something that we'll cover throughout the day. But um, most people seem excited to get to that part, and so we save it for the end of the day when your, your brain is probably pretty tired and everybody can feel a little bit refreshed with the change of pace at the end of the day. And so we have our, definitely have our hands full with just creating the baseline building alone. Now, this slide is about what we should know already, but we'll get to that. If you do not know this stuff already, that's not as important. But um, what we would hope that you would know is just some general equest use, such as navigating the program, uh, the difference between the wizards. And for instance, if you knew what we were saying when we said a .imp file or a .pd2, uh, that's just the extension for equest files. So um, one of the prerequisites Maybe not necessarily a prereq, but it's certainly something that would help you is, of course, HDAC knowledge. Since a number of system types are defined for the baseline building, and it's a good, it's good practice to know what those systems are. So that said, if you didn't know anything or hardly anything about any of this, the real important part is the process that we're going through. And even if it seems difficult, um, this is something that is is very difficult to find in eQuest because the documentation uh, would probably lead you down a path that uh, will would be probably a path of destruction, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. So uh, there's what we're covering today is the standard method that experienced eQuest users use to make lead buildings. So uh, finally, after this course. What can we do? Well, we should be able to create an eQuest file for lead submission. We should be able to troubleshoot it, and we should be able to estimate time and cost for a lead energy model in eQuest. So with that said, we can jump into our crash course. There's a few more slides here that we have to cover. So one of the things that's really important to know is what are the tools for the job? Just like any job, this job essentially has a tool belt. And of course, the first thing, first and foremost is eQuest. It's in the course title. But the next most important thing, more important than the lead manual for certain, is Azure Standard 90.1. And we're using 2007. Um, soon we'll be using the 2010 version. The rules are a little bit different, but they're uh, basically the same and the process is definitely very similar. So um, I would actually recommend having a printed copy of Azure Standard 90.1 and if you can, if, you, if your company can swing it, also to buy the digital copy. I think they were giving them away for free for a while, so it's something to uh, stay, stay posted on Azure's website. When you start a project, you usually want to have printed copies of the drawings, uh, and what we're talking, what we mean by the drawings is the architecturals and typically the mechanical schedules. There's no better method that we've been able to find than good old-fashioned highlighters, and uh, we're not using those highlighters uh, just to sniff and uh, make this seem easier. The highlighters are generally used to 
draw out, for instance, your ductwork so you can identify systems. In small buildings, it's easy. In large buildings, it can get quite difficult because you need to know which system and it goes with which room and so on. And we'll cover some examples of that. We have that drawn out for you in a PDF that you'll look at. And so you can see kind of what we would do um, with the highlighters. But uh, like I said, there's really just uh, no better way that we can find to, to get organized with that. And uh, believe me, I am not the type of person that uh, would typically like to mark up a drawing with highlighters. So it's just something that I find um, and the rest of us find to save a lot of time. And the other thing, and this is really unique to eQuest, is you get those drawings typically from whoever you're working with. If you're an MEP firm, obviously you probably made the drawings. But if you can get the DWG or the DXF file, that will speed things up in eQuest incredibly. It's one of the best things about eQuest. Okay, and one thing that we want to point out is, well, what is ASHRAE Standard 90.1? And here's a picture of it. ASHRAE Standard 90.1 is a book. So if you're very new to this, it sounds like we're talking about some sort of uh, obscure item. It's just a book. Um, this is a picture of the cover of it. It's about 200 pages, and uh, there's a PDF of it, and, uh, of course, a hard copy it costs about $100. So speaking of things that uh, some people may be unfamiliar with, in the course description, we mention unmet hours without realizing that some people don't know what an unmet hour is. So basically, an unmet hour is any hour where the model has one room that is not at its set point. Unmet hours are actually poorly defined for lead. They're referenced, but they're not defined. So eQuest uses its own definition, which is any space that is beyond its set point by two degrees, which is actually the default. And so that's something that you can change, which is really unique uh, to eQuest and uh, really actually pretty great. So most software does not allow that. Uh, one interesting thing about unmet hours is that you can have one room out of 100 rooms causing an unmet hour, or if you have 99 rooms with unmet hours at the same hour, it only counts as one unmet hour either way. And so it's just a probability that the more rooms you have, the more unmet hours that you'll have. And this is something that uh, standard 90.1 might address in the future. But right now, you're only allowed 300 on that hours, and there's 87, 60 hours in a year. And uh, you can have a closet that easily has 5,000 on that hours. And so uh, eQuest is very good at allowing you to address the issue of, for instance, a storage closet, uh, which we'll get to. So the reason that we bring this up right away is because it is the number one easiest way to get a file denied, especially for new users. And while, while I was working at the support desk at CDS, it was the most common question by far. And so it's definitely um, one of the biggest obstacles for lead modeling. In fact, I've actually myself witnessed people and companies spending more time resolving unmet hours than on their entire model. In fact, we've been brought into models that have been completed and basically contracted out to essentially redo the model because they were so frustrated with the amount of time and money they were wasting solving on that hours. So much of what we do and we recommend to you will have the focus of preventing on that hours. So um, and it's fine to ask questions, but many of you will say, well, why are you doing that? And half the time it's because Maybe, maybe there's some other reasons, but it's because this will lower the probability of unmet hours. So now that we know what we don't want, let's take a look at five things that we want to know about our model. We need to know the climate zone. We need to know the building total square footage. The building type, such as if it's residential, if it's non-residential, and what type of heating it has. So if it's gas heat, if it's electric heat, if it's mixed heat, 
etc. We need to know those things up front. Uh, we also need to know the percent glass, sometimes called the window to wall ratio. But I think that's misleading because the percent glass should also include the glass doors. And so we look at it as percent glass. And this is often up for debate, but I would say that with without a doubt that one of the most important factors is the rate structure. And so that's something that you should have an idea of to start with. And you can use statewide averages, which are available online. And it's something that uh, we actually take care of at energymodels.com, but we don't yet have the eQuest exports. So we're working on that. But uh, it's something that you should have an idea of. So it should be noted that the climate zone, it's one of the trickier things for new users to find, and that's in 